But let's go ahead and get started. And please join me in welcoming uh, Patty Buendia. Hello. OK. Uh, I just realized my name is not on the slide. Uh, I work, I did this presentation twice already for the National Institute of Health as a consultant for BioTeam. And it was an important, my name was an important, it was just important that I present I2B2 and how uh, we did this uh, transformation. So we've, we've uh, actually talked a little bit about how to transform REDCap to I2B2 and OMO to I2B2. And uh, someone here in the audience asked me, what is DBGAP? And I realized, sorry about that, I should have maybe modified the, this presentation for this audience. I don't explain the BGAP because it's for the NIH. This is what I presented at the National Institute of Health and they know the BGAP is a um, repository, data repository for genomics data and also phenotypic clinical um, data. It's hosted at the NCBI, an institute from the National Institute of Health. And it has a lot of clinical trial data with genomic data. The data dictionaries are public, but the data itself are not. They're controlled access. You need to get a DUA to get it. So I even uh, was planning a demo, but I realized I don't have a lot of time. So let me start quickly. This, I probably don't need to explain to you what I2B2 is. It has been explained a few times now, um, almost recently with a lot of detail. But at least you get an idea here what I presented to the NIH. And the I2B2 people can uh, you know, at least tell me later if I did a good job, if these are the right slides. I started by explaining um, that this is how it's being used at MGB, and the reason I did that is because the NIH has, um, I, I would say, a little more outdated electronic health records, but they might go with EPIC, and they have a um, clinical data warehouse that is, uh, doesn't have really this self-query um, uh, feature. And, and they don't support genomics, et cetera. So I thought this is a very nice graphic that shows, and you've seen it before, how you can use I2B2 in, in this setting of EPIC and, and, and imaging data and, and genomics and REDCap. So this is um, what I explained again the, to the NIH folks so they understand what I2B2 is. And uh, for you, all of you, what, what is very interesting, and also I wanted to uh, reiterate that for the NIH people is that we were two bioteam consultants who um, got the I2B2, a new uh, I2B2 version of Docker ETL, um, I2B2 ETL Docker version that we could quickly install. We did it first in our laptops and then we did it in our cloud and then we did it in the NIH uh, AWS cloud environment. Um, and so it was important for us to say that because we were actually kind of, in a way, competing with some other pilots. So there's Terra from, from the Broad Institute. They actually started a little bit after me, but some a Palantir Foundry started before me and they did a great job. And you know how big their team is and you know how much money they have here. We have two bio team consultants. So let me continue. I'm looking at the clock. This actually took me, oh, why is it not going? Uh, I need here the magician escape, no? <laughs> Just trying to advance slides. Yeah. Oh, oh, the little buttons, you know. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, okay. So what we did is we um, had to we had access to some studies, some controlled access studies of like about four thousand five hundred uh, patients each. It was uh, age related. Uh, macular degeneration, so some eye studies, and we had to transform it from dbGaP to I2B2 format. Uh, so this is what I'm going to um, share with you a little bit. I also have a demo, but I don't think I will have time, I, I, um, and you will see some of these tomorrow. And so basically, getting the data, I think I still want to talk to uh, Victor Castro about how he's doing REDCap, because it's 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 so much, I, I probably read cap data is a little bit cleaner, but there there was a lot of work there to to clean up the data and I have a slide showing that. Uh, so we did some Python scripts here. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I perhaps the R the R scripts that you wrote for red cap might have helped in this case too, uh, but we wrote our own and then um, actually the ETL and querying the data was very quick with uh, using this new I2B2 ETL Docker that we um, installed. So regarding data cleaning and curation, we, we had to add that slide because it took us so much time. It was a headache. Uh, even some things, you know, so, you know, some of these 
things that field is defined as integer, but it has decimals, and then the code breaks. Uh, you're expecting a, a range, which is, has a dash in between, but they add an equal sign. And, and, and we, of course, with IW2, there, the slashes mean something. It's the path in, in, um, in the database, and so that also broke it, and so on. So here is uh, an example of that I gave with one of the data sets. CDC was one of the data sets. I don't, I'm not sure exactly. It's some kind of a team lab test. In that particular data set, I didn't need to convert. It was already in the correct format, more or less, where you have one row, a patient per row with one measurement or value. And I'm showing the concepts file, which you've seen before, uh, so that you can see how it looks in. And we used a new UI, which was uh, really, we enjoyed using it. Uh, so we didn't need to, to transform this particular one. However, most of the other data sets in dbgap are look more like this, like regular tables. So you have a patient and then all the information is in, in the columns, not one per row. And there's the other one, enrollment randomization, how the patients were enrolled in a particular treatment. So for those, if you see how I, uh, we had to convert the demographics one here, you have gender, race, and so on. We had to convert what we could map to the database, so we had to map the age, which you see was just a value, 61.3 to 61, et cetera, and we had, um, you know, uh, female, et cetera. So all that we had to do with the with the little scripts. So I don't have time for the demo, but I might be actually running even ahead of time. Uh, but I'm going to show you a little bit of what uh, we did. So we. For the ETL, we used the old uh, user interface. It was built on the old user interface. And I actually showed how to do, for example, this. I, I ETL some data in the demo, I ETL some data, but you're going to see that tomorrow, I think, um, when Kavi presents um, his ETL Docker solution. So, uh, so we basically then run a, um, a query. You've seen many of these queries. Here we have 40 patients um, looking at uh, actually adverse events, different types of adverse events. And then we uh, also did the same query with the new user interface. We wanted to show them how it's evolving uh, and the new features and so on. So it, it was obviously well received, especially uh, everybody likes that you can move things around a little, the windows and so on. Um, okay, so one of the other things that we also showed, and you hopefully you'll see it tomorrow, is this Venn diagram, which uh, during our work with the I2B2 group, um, I, I must say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to own it. I, I suggested that it would be nice to have a plugin like this. And, and then Nick went, Nick Benick, and, and he created it. I don't know what Nick is. Um, and it's fantastic. It, does, it breaks down if you have too many uh, different um, uh, patient sets, but it, you cannot add too many into the, into the diagram. But in this case, and I did this query, I basically grabbed first like all of the uh, patients in the clinical trial that had ever smoked, move them over, the patient said. So I'm just showing you because I'm not running the demo. It would be too much to bring my laptop. But um, then, uh, you know, I move over the, all the male um, patients that had adverse events, all the female adverse events. And one of the things that you can already see that is interesting and maybe something to see is that although there are more females, you have more males that, you know, had uh, this... Uh, any kind of um, cir circulatory system uh, diagnosis. So it, it basically shows how you can use I2B2 uh, even to do some type of research that you could publish somewhere or you can follow up. Um, okay, so let me, I don't know why I'd always do that. Escape. Okay, so the conclusions. Uh, we, um, this is what I presented to the NIH. I said, um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it supports data. Uh, we can actually use some of the vocabularies, although it supports data with standard vocabularies, we could also add the uh, data dictionary concepts into it. Uh, we like the new user interface. Um, it's a user, has a user-friendly query self-service for data exploration and finding cohorts. Uh, I showed them how to use the ETL for bring your own data, and um, although I'm not doing it here, um, the most difficult task was really cleaning up the, the dbgap data. And um, I said, yes, I, we love that the ETL Docker installation, uh, you know, the, the old one was, was a little bit of a pain. <laughs> I, I work with that one. So that's, that's it.